Hello, everybody. It's Eric Virathaler of Virathaler Studios here once again. So, uh, people were commenting, uh, rather trying to su suggest that for my live streams and interviews that I should uh, invest in getting a green screen. So, so that's what I did. I now have a green screen. And yeah, and, uh, and yeah, and I obviously I had to invest money in getting a green screen for my computer chair, but honestly, I really do think it's worth it because this definitely looks a lot more professional actually having a green screen for my computer. Uh, so yeah, uh, happy anniversary, Bo. Thank you, Antoni, so much. I wonder who else is here. May I please join you? Yeah, sure, man. But yeah, 15 whole years of being on YouTube. It's crazy. Time just zooms on by, huh? But yeah, to think that when I first started YouTube, I re remember I was struggling hard trying to get subscribers. I was frustrated that I wasn't getting many subscribers. But hey, I persisted on. Now I'm getting close to 3,000 subs. So just, just got to be persistent about it. But yeah, what does everybody think of the green screen that I have now? But yeah, rather than, you know, rather than just ignoring the advice, I thought, you know, that's really good advice. I should act on it. So yeah, I invested my own money in getting a green screen. Hey, Tony Montana, how's it going? What do you think of the green screen that I have now. Copy link. I have 15 whole years of being on YouTube. Wow. 15 years. But yeah, uh, my actual 15th anniversary is on the 19th. Funny how I joined YouTube the day before 420 back in 2009. But I thought, hey, I doubt I'll have time on the 19th because of school, taking the acting class, finishing up my semester of college, the play that I'm in. I doubt I'm actually going to have time on the on my actual anniversary day. So I thought, hey, probably best if I did it early. So, yeah. 15 years, I mean, to think when I first started YouTube, I was 16 years old, and I've come a long ways. It's definitely like a lot of my viewers on YouTube, like, they definitely watched me grow as a person. They watched me grow up, mature, so, uh, yeah, about the Q&A, so, uh, so I was thinking about having it be a comedy sketch for the Q&A, but because of the time constraints, I'm honestly thinking that maybe I should have the Q&A be like a pre-recorded thing because I don't want to keep you all waiting too long to have your questions answered. And yeah, and you know, me and Travis and everyone else involved with making my movies you know, of course, we invest as, as much time as we can, but, you know, we, we all have things going on with our lives. Uh, no, I mean, if I know that you did send questions in, so, I mean, if you came up with more questions, you can go back to that video uh, where I was asking people to submit your questions. I don't believe that I gave a time frame for when you could submit the questions. Alrighty. A lot of random people have been messaging me on, well, more so adding me on Facebook. It's like, no mutual friends. So it's like, 
why do the some of these random people keep adding me? I'm ready for the link. I just sent you it, so I got five viewers. Hey, everybody! But yeah, 15 years on YouTube. That's I've come a long ways with my channel. But yeah, Sebastian recommended I should get a green screen. Uh, a lot of other people did as well. I can't really remember exactly everyone who did. But yeah, uh, with the green screen, yeah, I can see that part of my hair is all fuzzy there. Yeah, it kind of makes me, yeah, it's like moving. kind of makes me look like I'm swimming. Hello. Good evening, Eric. Congratulations. How are you? <laughs> Busy. Yeah. Just yeah. To, I'm just preparing some dinner for myself, you know? Awesome, man. Uh, what are you making? Um, Just some leftover mashed potatoes. And funnily enough, I kind of have the red wine reduction and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Well, that sounds awesome. So I'm going to get to you once I'm done preparing and um then we can chat so how okay. have things been for you man oh things have been well uh just uh well with the play that i'm in i noticed that i do have my lines down which is great because i don't know if you've ever done theater before but uh I, what, huh i have man i really have but yeah, so and then I don't know if you experienced this whenever you've done a play. Like one of the most embarrassing moments is when you're actually doing the show and then you forget one of your lines. Oh, no doubt about it. It is really oh, mortifying. That's so embarrassing. Ugh. It's it's but yeah. it's like, oh god, how if I dare forget my lines. Sometimes I had that, especially in like certain moments, but I just move on and I try not to make it too obvious. Yeah, exactly. And that's been my advice to all, all the people who I've worked with in theater. It's like, say, if you don't remember some of your lines in case of worst case scenario happens and you forget your lines, just, mm -hmm. you know, like just go with the flow, just like improvise, go along with it. Like exactly. don't make a scene about it. A really good example is in the dark night, like with that scene, like with Heath Ledger, like when he's walking away from the hospital, when he's pushing that button, mm -hmm. that whole scene, like with him, you know, messing with the button, that was not in the, that was not in the, that was not in the script whatsoever. And, but then rather Absolutely. than break the character, Heath stayed in character and he just goad, uh, goad, sorry, he mm -hmm. just went along with it and mm -hmm. and then what do you know they ended up keeping on the movie probably because of that explosion cost a lot of money and they couldn't afford to go back and redo it so right on that's very fascinating to know that type of stuff that it is behind the scenes hey also right there that keith ledger really was a professional in his craft oh that and it's just a real shame, like, by the fact that he passed away. And and to imagine that that was 16 years ago. Yeah. Right, he passed away. Holy crap, dude. Exactly. My mom and I, my mom and I caught the dark, my mom and I caught that film back then. It was, it was probably the most shocking passings ever because Heath Ledger really was on the cusp of, um, he was, he really was on the cusp of an international, a more international career, you know? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, Definitely. 29 years old, that is just insane. Yeah. And especially considering that when he was cast as the Joker, a lot of people took huge issue with that. Like people were complaining about it mostly because he was in Brokeback Mountain and people thought he was too much of a pretty boy. Uh -huh. And 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 yes heath ledger did prove everyone wrong but exactly. it, it's just a real shame the fact that he didn't get to live to see 
how he proved all those people wrong. And especially considering that he won the Oscar for it. And sadly, since that he wasn't alive for it, mm. it, um, it was his family like who accepted the Oscar like on his behalf. And then 11 years later, Joaquin Phoenix also would win an Oscar playing the exact same character. Um, that is very fascinating. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, how often does that happen that two different actors both win an Oscar playing the same character? It's once in a blue moon, really. Yeah. But most of all, most of all, I get it because people were just not expecting that Heath Ledger, I mean, someone who was known for romantic roles could like um really portray such an iconic villain, even to the point where he is on par with Mark Hamill. Yep, and yep, and people still to this day say that Heath Ledger is the best Joker we've ever had. And what I also remember is that at that time, like before the movie came out, when it was announced that he was cast, people were saying, oh, he, he is never going to top Jack Nicholson. It's because that Jack Nicholson owned that role. And to think after the movie came out, it's now the general can census is that Heath Ledger's performance is actually better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sorry if I was like off camera for a while because, I'll you try. know, I haven't eaten in, you know, hours. And the only thing I had was like a, a bit of a chocolate bunny that uh, for Easter. <laughs> So yeah, well, hey, I mean you gotta do what you gotta do. Hey Junebug, and thank you, Gus, so much. But yeah, uh, I believe Junebug was one of the people like who said I should get a green screen. Well, mm -hmm. um, well, uh, my green screen came in yesterday, and uh my I was trying to come up with okay, what would I have in my background? Mm -hmm. Uh I saw that there were like some generic pictures of like a house and whatnot. I'm like, nah. So then I thought, mm -hmm. hey, I think it would be best. If I used my, if I use like my actual logo. Exactly. For my channel. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I've definitely had a lot going on. But yeah. What's up, June Austin? But What's yeah. up, Ty? Hey, Austin. Hey, but, yeah. but yeah, Junebug, uh, what do you think of this whole green screen thing? Uh, do you think it was worth an investment of my money? But yeah, um, it's definitely weird because I, got... I think it really is. I think it really is a an investment because you know I can understand where you're coming from with wanting to promote your brand, and um, I definitely will root for you for that. Awesome. Well, I certainly appreciate that, and yeah, and. Uh... And since I'm here per in person, I think also had some. I also have some questions ready for you to answer. Okay. Well, now I am curious. First of all, what are your top seven favorite anime series? My top seven. Yes. Okay. Well, hard for me to say because. There are a lot of animes that I like, mm -hmm. but uh, it's hard for me to say which one I, I would rank over the other. I'm definitely a fan of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Uh, hard for me to say which one I like more over the other. Dragon Ball Z, at least to me, seems a little bit more action-orientated, while yes, it, it definitely does have a plot as well. Mm -hmm. I like High School of the dead i like hell scene okay i'm out of focus i need to yeah i also think i need to invest in getting into a better webcam as well but but yeah uh let's see. hell scene high school of the dead dragon ball dragon ball z uh what were some other good ones uh what was the one with like that with like that giant blue tiger Robot, uh, wasn't it called Zoids or mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Zoids. Yeah. Uh, I remember back when I was a kid, uh, I absolutely loved that anime. And I mean, heck, and I still love it to this very day. So let's see. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Fantastic. Zoids. High School of the Dead. Helsing. While Sonic X, I guess it depends on if it's the American version or the Japanese version. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people do agree that the Americanized version is definitely a step down from the Japanese version. True. While I definitely do agree with that, but Sonic X, I, for better or worse, Sonic X did introduce uh, a wider demographic like to the Sonic to the mm. Sonic franchise. And I will admit, Sonic X, it definitely was pretty faithful to the video games. I mean, it went as far as actually actually adapting some of the games. Like, it, it adapted Sonic Battles, Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. And, uh, I believe they adapted... Okay, I'll have to focus again. Damn it. But yeah, um, I believe it even adapted Sonic Heroes. So yeah, the... Japanese version definitely has a lot more fan service. It's because that it does actually have live and learn by Crush 40 from Ooh, Sonic right 2. So yeah, so I guess because of my sakes, because uh I guess that I kind of prefer the Japanese version because I definitely do think well, like that the way how they did the story was better and the fan service was better. And uh, some of the voice acting in Sonic X for the American version wasn't, it just kind of sounded kind of generic. Mm. So mm. yeah, so I guess for Sonic X, it depends on which version that you're talking about. I definitely would say that the Japanese version is a lot better. But I mean, to be fair, with a lot of dubs, like from Japanese entertainment, a lot of the times, the Japanese version is always going to be the better version. Indeed. Yeah, like people even say that about Dragon Ball Z. No love for... Honestly, I haven't ever even... I haven't ever even heard of it, so... But yeah, um, I definitely would not be against to watch it, though. See, so yeah, I named six. Oh, yeah, and... uh. Another one I love also is about a giant robot, a white robot. I think it was called Gundam. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Gundam. I definitely was a fan of that one as well. So, yeah. So, so yeah. So, my personal favorites would be those. Uh, Even Legion. I haven't heard of it, but I definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely want to be against watching it. I mean, if it's on like Tubi or something, I, I can definitely watch it. But yeah, so so with, with that with that said, um, in your own opinion, what do you prefer? Uh, do you watch the move? Uh, do you prefer to watch movies on like Netflix, Tubi, Hulu, or any of that, or do you prefer to actually have a physical copy? If I had it my way, I would really prefer to have a physical copy because, well, it's not just the movie that you're enjoying, but also the special features. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, personal experience, speaking as personal experience, and especially considering that my relatives have a lot of, like, physical media. I just love going back to Thelma and Louise because when I listen to the version with commentary, I understand, like, what were the intentions of Ridley Scott and the people behind the scenes and um, gauging to listen to. Hello, Mr. D-Man 21. Um, and um, it also helps that there's also the um, special features. And of course you could yep. listen to the, the films in various languages. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. And what I love about physical media is that once you have it, you can have it for as long as you want, which one of the downsides to like all these services to exactly. movies on like Tubi is that they are not going to be on there forever. And so yeah, say you can have them for life. Yep. Say if you see a movie on there and then you want to watch it and then you make time to watch it, then it's not on there anymore. Like a good example is that there are some movies where 
where some services only will show it a certain time of year, like Peacock only will show mm -hmm. the Universal Monsters around Halloween. It's like, look, I get it that they are horror movies, but even throughout the entire year, Peacock like will show all these other horror movies throughout the entire year. I'm like, okay, if you're going to show all these other horror movies throughout the entire year, regardless if it's Halloween or not, you might as well should just have the Universal Monsters on there throughout the whole entire year. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I saw around Halloween time, Tubi had all the Saw movies, um, and then Tubi got rid of them. It's just, that's one of my really big pet peeves, is the fact that they'll take a movie off, they will take a show off. So yeah, and it's because of that is why that I prefer physical media. And even going back to what you said, even uh like all the special features about said like about said film or tv show and i mean heck it's because of the special features like is why that i found out who sarah why i found out who sarah karloff is it's why that i gained all of this knowledge so yeah mm -hmm. and austin says physical media and to be pay creators the best yeah definitely Hey, Dylan, but yeah, I definitely can send you an invite. But yeah, Dylan, uh, as you can see, I I did invest getting a green screen for my channel. And yeah, people were saying that I should because it, it will look more professional. I'm definitely glad that I did. But yeah, my advice to you, I'm not saying that you have to, but I definitely think you and Travis definitely should consider investing in one as well but i mean ultimately it is your your guys's channel i just hope you understand that i'm just trying to help out and mr d man yeah, yeah they just took miami vice off to be yep exactly like jurassic park is a really good example of a movie that's on like netflix and all these other streaming services and then taken off back on taken off back yeah it's it's nonsense really. I wasn't not to mention yep. Not to mention that the thing about having physical media is that um it's not just you possessing it, but it's also because it's also of sentimental value. Far more of sentimental value. Oh yeah. Definitely. And one of the cool things about DVDs is that you actually, like, if you go to a convention, like, to meet somebody who was involved with said movie, you can get them to sign it. Mm -hmm. All right, sending you the link now. But yeah, Dylan, isn't it crazy that I've been on YouTube for 15 years now? That's time just zooms on by. All right, Junebug texts me. I would join, but I'm going out to dinner. Well, I certainly hope that you enjoy dinner. Mm. Thank you. Hey, Dylan. I, hey, I, hey there, Dylan. What's up, man? But yeah, um, I can I can see that you cut your hair. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Uh what exactly made you decide to cut it like did you just want to change yeah um so my uh hair was falling out oh oh man yeah sorry, oh well i'm sorry if i asked it's just that it was the, no, first, it's okay. um, it was the first thing that i noticed that about no, yeah my my hair was falling out and we think it's because of the covid but um and possibly some of the medications but oh i'm sorry man. so i just decided instead of having it continue to fall out i just cut it all off so yeah um have you thought about maybe seeing like a doctor a eh? yeah I, talk, I, I talked to my doctor about it he just told me to take like biotin and stuff like that so i can grow back like healthier and stuff like that okay oh my so. okay man well i'm definitely sorry to hear you've been dealing that with your hair and uh, i certainly hope that you can get that exactly 
soon because uh i mean i mean i can only imagine just how devastating that that would be i mean mm -hmm. even though that i haven't gone through that but just you know just trying to put myself in your shoes yeah i'm sorry man. um i mean i did go through premature hair loss as well back then when i was a teenager yeah sure. um it was a very difficult time looking back at it but um ever since i've also started to use like products like a very good product a hair serum for like my hair to make it thicker i think it's actually been working you know okay um, man so i could recommend you to like you know go to either you know a hair specialist to also invest in the serum yeah and yeah um i hope i i mean it i mean of course um it is definitely amazing that you know you eric have been here on youtube for 15 years and um it's fantastic really as for me you know i've ended up being on youtube for 13 years and i recognize that it was a pretty slow um progress for me but i'm glad that in the 13 years i've been here on youtube i ended up obtaining 2140 subscribers by the way travis i totally understand where you're coming from yeah but it also depends on how well you take care of your dvds okay. and how well you set it over there. take care of physical media because if you can take care of them and keep them in good condition then they will last for a long period hey eric yeah. Do you want to see the camera Travis and I got for our YouTube channel? Yeah. Uh, you said that that was, yeah, you said like that was like the 4K one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's see it. I also hope that Travis, oh, Dude, totally. that's amazing. I also hope that Travis joins us. I mean, it'd be great to have both of you bros in this um, live stream. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it really truly depends on if Travis is busy or not. This is what Yeah, dude. Look. That's amazing. Mmm. Luscious. Did you two purchase that at did you two purchase that like at Best Buy? No, I purchased it online on the Sony store. Awesome, mm. so, Wasn't my thing on that. It's mostly, yeah, I, I uh, just, like I like I said, Travis, I totally understand where a lot of people are coming from with this argument. But yeah, um, it sounds like that both sides have their advantages and disadvantages. I, I guess it more so depends on like what the, I, I guess it depends on the person. I mean, I'm pretty biased towards DVDs, especially considering that that's what I was raised on. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, heck, I am old enough like to even remember when VHS. Yes, so am I. Thing, so so Some, am I. Sometime this week, Travis and I are filming our best movies of 2023. So, awesome, man. Well, I'm definitely excited to see that. We just posted our worst movies of 2023. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, I saw your video, and I'm really not surprised about what you two picked for number one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really not surprised and at all. So we posted it yesterday, and right now it has 43 views, so... Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. I could definitely imagine that a lot of your viewers, including including yeah. me, definitely did miss to see all of your content. I, I mean, I have to admit, while I do understand why that there was no content on the 406 Boys for the longest time, it's yeah. a very justifiable reason. Mm -hmm. I will admit that it definitely felt weird going onto my YouTube. And it felt really weird, like, to not see any videos, like, from the 406 boys for yeah. a long time. Mm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I still have, yeah. And even to imagine that a lot of cars now don't have CD players anymore. A lot of yeah. newer computers don't have them anymore. I mean, heck, even the computer that I have now doesn't have a CD drive. And so, and then because of that, uh, I then had to purchase like my, my own separate, like, cd drive just to plug into my computer and so yeah i mean i could and i could see why you know people 
still want to, you know, preserve physical media because, you know, physical media will never die. Let's face it. I sure hope not. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to be pessimistic. I have no idea what the future lies ahead, but I definitely hope that. Uh, but yeah, I definitely hope that physical media will not. Oh, die. I just thought of something. Um, you want to see what I ordered for myself? Yeah, man. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it, but I'll show you anyway. Yeah, no worries. All right. Ah. Awesome, dude. Nice. It's, called a, it's called the PlayStation Portal. So you know the, oh, PS, you know the PS5? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's uh -huh. basically that, but do you remember the PSPs? Yes. yes so I this actually is, had one. It's basically a PSP, but it's a PS5, but portable. Ooh. Oh, so yeah. I've enjoyed Game Boys as well, is you, man. Connect, you connect to Wi-Fi, and you connect this to your PlayStation 5 console while your PlayStation 5 is on, and you can mm -hmm. play uh, PS5 games while it's connected to your PS5 console from anywhere. Right. And you can play online games with anybody from this anywhere. Awesome, hmm. man. So, it's pretty dope. Yeah, I mean... Hearing that definitely makes me wish I had a PS5 is because I have an Xbox One. While I love my Xbox One, <laughs> it seems like you can do a lot more cool things with a PS5. Yeah, so switching from being an Xbox gamer to a PlayStation gamer was probably the best choice I ever made. Because oh, yeah, I, I feel imagine. like, especially with the PlayStation exclusive games that you get, are a lot better than the Xbox exclusive games you get. Because, like, when I first got to play... Because I first... <clears throat> I first played um, Spider-Man 2 when it came out uh -huh. in October. And I beat that game. And I got all the trophies and the Platinum trophy in six days after it came out. Mm. So I not only did I 100% the game... But I got all, every single trophy getting the platinum trophy in just six days. Right on. Yeah. Spider-Man 2 was a great game. So. Yeah, and sadly, because I don't have a PS5, I haven't played yeah. Spider-Man 2, but, but I have played Spider-Man 1. Yeah, and... and I'm working on getting the platinum on that right now. I got the platinum on um, Miles Morales as well, so... Mm -hmm. Awesome, man. Miles Morales was fun. The only thing I didn't like about it is the story was really short. The story right. was a lot shorter, but otherwise it was a really fun game. Um, I'm still working on Spider-Man right now, though. So, Oh, yeah, and what a lot of people complained about, I believe it was for Spider-Man 1 for the PS4 or PS5. I can't really remember. People were complaining like about how like, they changed uh, like the Peter Parker like. Mm -hmm. Uh, character design or whatever. Yeah, uh, there are people who complained about it. Um, it seemed to me, from what I remember, is that they changed the model to look more like Tom Holland. Yeah. And, um, even though it's not exactly Tom Holland, probably because of legal reasons, but it's yeah. at least close enough. Yeah, that, I made, that sense. made sense. And they made. I never some... really bought Tom Holland as a, as someone who could play Spider Man because and they made. He's too boyish. He's yeah. too. He looks too young, and you know, he doesn't really have the appropriate um, uh, swagger to make the character believable. And the Miles Morales in the Miles Morales or in the Spider-Man games, they made him look like the Miles Morales kind of in the um, Spider-Verse uh, mm. movies. So. Right, but, yeah. Which and I, I, which and I mean, doing that does make sense, especially mm -hmm. since that the Spider Verse movies like are new and they mm -hmm. are also getting a lot of buzz. Right, rightfully so, because last year I was saying that Across the Spider Verse was one of the best movies I saw last year. It wasn't mm -hmm. until when I saw Godzilla minus one, and I was like, okay, as much mm -hmm. as I love Across the Spider Verse, I'm now. I then changed my mind and I said, you know what? 
I think Godzilla minus one like was the best movie like that came out in, in twenty twenty three and yeah and yeah I mean if you haven't seen Godzilla minus one I I'm sure Travis has but yeah see it I mean because of Godzilla X Kong it's not in theaters anymore but I'm sure that it should be coming out on like on like DVD and and all that soon but yeah definitely see it with yeah you. unfortunately I never got to see Godzilla minus one for uh, like reasons so yeah and, and I mean but yeah I mean knowing that what you had to deal with at that time I say mm -hmm. that's a very justifiable reason to not mm -hmm. see it but yeah definitely and, when you see it mm -hmm. uh, sorry but when it comes out on like Netflix or whichever physical media, definitely see it. Mm. Unfortunately, right now I can't really go see movies in theaters right now. Why is that? Well, because I have um, my wound vac machine and it makes like noises and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh so man. So like it like makes noise and stuff like that. So. I don't want to. I don't want to go to the theater and like disrupt people's time or whatever. Wait, so. Dylan, do you also suffer? I I know I don't want to sound too personal, especially since it's weight related. But um, do you also ha unfortunately have sleep apnea or no? No. So um, I know I do, but I I just have to get a sleep study. Yeah. So I have to get a sleep study. So. Because well, you know, but they already told him, yeah, I most likely do so, yeah. yeah so, because oh. oh man, so like, my I like I told my doctor, I mean, like, I've so, like, before I went into the hospital and like I was in a coma and stuff like that, I was already like on a weight loss journey and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And before I went into the hospital, I had gone from 462 pounds down to 424 pounds Jeez. and um while i was in the hospital i went from 424 pounds to four, 370 pounds okay so while i was in the hospital i lost like close to 50 60 pounds shit and how wow. long was that how long was that weight loss so i spent 72 days in the hospital holy crap man so, yeah. Yeah, I'm so and, sorry. And you. and Eric, Eric actually got to see me twice in the hospital. So yeah, I did. I mean, even though I was busy at that time, but you know, I wanted to show my support still, and I did everything I could like to mm. see you as much as I possibly could. Yeah. But yeah, so basically, that's what sucks is losing the fifty to sixty pounds in the hospital. That also comes with losing weight in muscle. Yeah. Because I was just mainly losing weight while laying there most of the time. And um, so I wasn't really doing much. And I was losing weight at the same time because I wasn't eating much and stuff like and, that. And you had to survive on a sort of liquid diet or what? For the, for the first couple weeks, yeah, I... I was on a liquid diet, yeah. Yes. Yeah. As yeah, far as the first ten days, for sure, when I was in a coma, I was strictly on a liquid diet. So. Well, yeah. I know how you feel about having that kind of diet because sometime around a year ago, I I had mm -hmm. some sort of infection inside of mm -hmm. inside of like my yeah yeah inside of me and uh, and then because of that, I was forced to go on a liquid diet for like a week and yeah and i lost 12 pounds mm -hmm. i very pretty fast um, but, in that amount of time so, but yeah, all that matters is i'm here now right oh right yeah now. definitely i mean i'm just really glad that you survived because when i saw that on facebook i believe i first heard about it from your mom or travis yeah. i can't remember yeah. when i saw that i was like oh no Mm -hmm. mm. but um yeah if i feel up to it i'll definitely i can go over to my apartment and we can do that celebration live stream yeah man mm. definitely because you yeah. went through a lot and i mean just knowing that you survived all that that in itself is a huge win yeah definitely, yeah. definitely. Listen, dylan do you have any questions for eric we'll move on um, to some later 
Yeah, so um, I guess one of the things I've always wanted to know is like what inspired you to start making those um, the things that piss you off videos. <laughs> so funny. Uh, what inspired me was uh, so I I came onto YouTube 15 years ago now, which was back in 2009. Mm -hmm. It was uh, so. I started my YouTube channel at the very end of my freshman year. Yep. At the very end of my freshman year, like was when I first found out who ABGN is. Oh yeah. So uh, I found out about ABGN because I was just curious. I wanted to look up reviews of the Halloween Atari game. Um, and then that's when I found his his review of the Halloween Atari game. And then. Um, I really didn't become a big fan until when he uploaded his Terminator 2 review. And then uh, and then I remember one day I did a whole marathon of watching all of his AVGN episodes, you know, with bullshit. Yeah. And honestly, James Rolfe actually is what inspired me like to create my YouTube channel. I mean, if it wasn't for James Rolfe, I mean – None of us, I mean, none of us like would be here now. And so, and then I was inspired by the series, you know, what's bullshit. And okay. I was inspired by AVGN. So what I did is that I decided that I should combine both, you know, what's bullshit and, and AVGN into my things that piss me off series. And okay. Yep, and the mm. rest is history. And I see a, people have other questions. Sorry, I haven't gone to the, to them yet. Tomatana asked my thoughts on Emily Blunt and all those other people involved with Oppenheimer. I thought that they all did a great job. I actually did do a review of Oppenheimer on my yeah. channel. I thought that it was a really, really good movie. This is not a point against Oppenheimer, but I can see it not being for everyone because it's definitely more dialogue heavy than it is action heavy so i could see the movie not appealing to everyone because of that but um it's definitely a very thought-provoking movie and what i loved about it is that it really shows the psyche of what would it do to somebody if you created a bomb like that killed a buttload of a buttload of people and, and yeah mm. and every single performance in it was great so yeah taking things off putting them back is just yep I definitely do agree. However, oddly enough, yeah, yeah. And I mean, like, heck, e even today when I went to Walmart and I went to Walmart um, just so I could purchase, like, a new phone card. And, yeah, and I saw, like, a Lion King record, and I've been seeing, like, a lot of records. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, um, those definitely have been making a comeback, and it's great. Because honestly, I didn't think that those ever would make a comeback, but they certainly have. So I guess with that in mind, no guarantee it's possible. Maybe VHS could make a comeback. Maybe it's no guarantee, but it's just something to think about. But yeah, I mean, as long as there is a market for it, it will survive. And Travis says, Tom Holland is the closest the character has ever been. Stan Lee even said he was the best part of man. But yeah, um, mm. Tom Holland definitely is the one like who actually looks like that he was in high school. Yeah. Oh, well. And what we have to remember. But you know, you know, you might, if you, in terms of like really good Spider Man um, installments, you might as well stick with the animated series from the 90s. Oh, yeah. Uh, I definitely do remember watching that as a kid and I loved it, but I am always going to have a soft spot like for Toby Maguire, even though I know that he wasn't yeah. as quippy in those as he is in, in the comics, but it's just the fact is Toby Maguire was Toby Maguire, like was the introduction to a lot of people like to Spider-Man. So because of that, a lot of people, including myself always will have a soft spot life for toby mm -hmm. another yeah. thing i've always wanted to know is um did you grow up watching the fresh prince of bel-air if so who is your favorite character and what is your favorite episode 
Oh man, I haven't seen Fresh Prince of Bel Air since I was like 14, 15 years old. So, what I do remember is that back then, a lot of people had uh, a lot of people had like the Fresh the Fresh Prince Bel Air theme song like on their MySpace pages, and even saying that even makes me feel old. But uh, Honestly, my memory about that show was way too vague, so I don't really remember much about it. I do know that there was a reboot um, that came out recently, but I, I don't think it did that very well. And Travis says, at the theater, many people would not see Godzilla Minus One because there's no English dub. That's sad. That's mm -hmm. really sad. You know, it, it's kind of like when people refuse to watch a movie that's in black and white just because it's in black and white. It's like, that's so petty exactly it's pathetic it is it's sad hey Tyrone ethereum i sent you a link Listen here for a moment hmm. what video are you what video are you talking but about? do you but another thing or speaking about fresh prince do you do you still enjoy will smith as an actor let alone as a performer or do you find him just way too overrated um, is that a question like to uh, both? Uh, is that a question like to both Dylan and I? Mainly to you, but I'd also like to hear your feedback on this, Dylan. Especially if you also grew up with Fresh Prince. So yeah, like I said, I didn't really grow up with Fresh Prince. I I, I saw it a little bit as a teenager, but I don't really remember much about it. Um, my opinion, Will Smith. He has the charisma, like which definitely makes people want to go back and and rewatch his movies and watch his movies. Now, the elephant in the room by what happened at the Oscars, like, look, I I do get he was trying to have his wife's back, but mm. I mean, that's a, a can of worms in of itself. It's like, look, I get it. You don't go up to people and assault them. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, a lot of people forget about this. Celebrities are people too. And and because of that, celebrities too, celebrities too also do things that they shouldn't do. And ultimately, mm -hmm. it seems to me, unless proven otherwise, it seems that he did learn his lesson about that infamous slap. I mean, He's banned from the Oscars like for 10 years. So now it would be eight years because that was because of that was two years ago. And ultimately, I do think that people need to move on from that. It's like that was like that was two years ago now. At this point, I feel like that we're beating a dead horse about that, but that's just my own opinion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so Dylan, what are your thoughts? Well, I know there's a handful of movies that I really like that have Will Smith in them. Like, I like Hitch. I like... Uh-huh. Um, I like Hancock. I like... Um, there's just a, there's a handful of movies that, you know, King Richard was a really good movie. Like, uh -huh. it was a really fantastic movie. <coughs> um... <laughs> Like you said, I think um, what he did at the Oscars was a mistake, but also, on the other hand, the joke that Chris Rock said was kind, kind of a low blow. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that doesn't grant him the right to do that, but it was, I think both people were in the wrong, so yep. I think that... Um, I think at this point it's just just good to just forget about it and you yeah. know Will Smith, Will Smith got punished for it. It's over. You know he can still win an Oscar technically. He just can't accept it. Mm. He can't physically accept it. So he's banned from any Academy functions um, for eight more years. So oh. I mean, ah, okay. Oh, hey there, Travis. Uh, I actually had no idea that you were in 
Yeah, yeah. I actually had no no idea that you were there. Yeah. Hey, Travis, what's up, man? Greetings, Travis. How have you been? Yeah, man. Yeah, I had no idea that he. Yeah, uh, in about twenty five minutes, or getting ready to head off to work. Oh, dang. okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, I guess with that in mind, uh, so both me and Dylan stated our opinions, like about Will Smith. Uh, did you maybe want to say your two cents about it? I guess the only thing that I could potentially say about it is that there was a, a lot of underlining rage that went on because at the time um, there was the whole thing um, with um, um, Jada um, cheating on Will at the time, that whole, mm. that whole thing that went by. And um, that's where the sad Will thing came out because I think what we also got to realize also is that um, – um at a time where he needed to basically needed at least some support um because he was upset about the whole thing that basically his wife was like yeah i cheated on on him because i wasn't feeling satisfied or whatever she got a lot of praise for that where we know that if the roles were reversed um will would have been drugged through the mud but mm -hmm. when will was just um upset they treated him like a joke and just made fun of him the entire time. It's like, oh, look at him. He's a big man just crying. And it's basically a long line of the toxic masculinity thing where, where basically we're kind of raised on this whole thing of you can't cry because you need to be shown that you're tough on the outside. And that whole thing that happened was just basically the straw that broke the camel's back. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And from what I heard, I heard that Jada cheated on him with like somebody who is significantly younger. Correct. Then her like it was like a 19 year old, I believe. Yep. Whoa. And wow. and um, basically online, they're like, oh, you are so brave at talking about this. Oh, um, and basically completely fully supportive of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I tell you, wow. double standards. Oh, man. But yeah, it definitely sounds like Will is in a toxic relationship. Yep. And from what I heard, the only reason why Will Smith hasn't divorced her is because of like financial reasons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, and in short, um, I also did not grow up with the, with the show. Um, and it was... Oddly, because of the fact that I was not allowed to watch the show as a kid. Mm. Because my father, not the one that right now, my father's reasoning for it is because it had too many black people in it. So what? I was not allowed to watch it. Huh? It's ridiculous. Yeah, my, his bio dad. My, my biological dad, who I don't live with anymore, was a raging racist like oh I, man because it it focused on a prom a a black family and basically mostly black people i was not allowed to watch fresh prince as a kid mm -hmm. that is that petty. A, yeah that's ridiculous same thing Come with um, all that when it came out which was huge for having a mostly african-american cast yep. nope mm -hmm. you can't watch that mm. i mean wow cosby cosby show the jeffersons uh, good times, family yep. matter. Yep, none of that. I did not watch um, some. As a matter of fact, I didn't even watch Family Matters until years later when they had. Reruns. Yeah, but this is also the same man that would jump up on a fence post screaming if he saw yeah. a mouse. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, he had a lot of rats. Uh. But, but the thing, but yeah, the thing is, um, I did not grow up with a lot of those um shows growing up. No. So I, I think Hitch was the first movie I saw of his. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and, and what makes me feel old, this too. yeah, and I feel old knowing that Hitch. I actually remember seeing that in theaters, like with, with my family, and that was two thousand five. That was almost twenty years ago. One of my favorites of his is uh, Bad Bo Bad Boys Two. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. One of my favorites of just yeah. for that one scene where he, you he, 30. he answers the door and he's like, How old are you? Motherfucker, you look 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, come Warren here. Lawrence and Will Smith definitely had great chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and now Bad Boys 4 is, or is it Bad Boys 4 five. or Bad Boys 5? Bad right. Boys 5 is coming out. Yeah. I thought it was Bad Boys 4, but... Yeah, it's 4, or, right? Or wait, it would be 4. Yeah, Bad Boys 4 is coming out. Yeah, yeah. I've only seen Bad Boys 2. I saw yeah. that when I was, like, my early teens. Yeah, Bad Boys 2 is so... It's my favorite in the whole series because it's so funny. As a matter of mm. fact, um, there was a moment in Bad Boys uh, 3, actually, where I actually had a similar moment happen in that movie that happened uh, with, yeah. when I was uh, driving my brother-in-law somewhere. Yeah. Um, the, I don't know if anyone has seen the movie, huh? Um, the, the one that came in 2020, I have no, well, there's a part where, um, they're firing at a helicopter and one is going for the pilot and it's like, no, go for the rotor. If you do that, the, it's going to keep going around. And of course, Martin Lawrence doesn't listen, fires, kills the pilot. And because the propellers are still going by, it's destroying everything. And he's like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. I had a moment like that where I was driving. Um, I forget where I was brother, where I was driving my brother-in-law at the time. But I was driving opposite of a one-way street one time and didn't even realize I was doing it. So I parked and he was like, what are you doing? What do you mean? You're in the wrong lane. What? You're in the wrong lane. I look over and see cars coming toward um, a line of cars coming toward me as the light turned green. I panic, just scream, oh shit, and then full on speed in reverse, trying to avoid getting hit by the car. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm thinking of how to get out of this. What? Man, that's crazy. Oh my God, dude, that's horrifying. Luckily, it wasn't um, a super busy street, but it was like the cars were coming. We're just coming or just coming forward and i they weren't going fast they were just looking at me just all looking at me like why are you in this lane well at least you survived all that oh man <coughs> that's ridiculous yeah. holy crap dude but yeah so i'm trying to get to all of your questions i ran through your mask am i going to see the new planet of the apes i definitely want to but uh i've been trying to cut back on some things so i can save some more money uh, so Ditto. I don't know if I will see the new Planet of the Apes in theaters. I would love to, especially because I absolutely have loved th these new Planet of the Apes movies. But yeah, maybe. VHS has boutique interest. Mm. Feature was awesome. Hey, Lamb, wow. before time. Hey, LBT. Thank you so much. I don't have my laptop with me. My Nana babysitter. Oh. Dolan says, bro. I'm sorry, dude. That's a shame. Um, I'm sorry, man. Mm. I'm really sorry to hear that. Will Smith laugh. <laughs> hey, Daniel. Hey, Dan. I'm not a Will Smith fan, but I am a fresh person. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <coughs> Table talk. Bad Boys for Life. Yeah. I think that was the title of the third movie. And yeah. the new one, yeah, I saw the trailer for it with when I saw Godzilla X Kong, uh, I believe. Oh, crap. I forgot its subtitle. Uh, for new Empire. Oh. Are you, talk oh, are you talking about Bad Boys? Yeah. Oh, I. Might be Bad Boys for Life. I don't remember. I think Bad Boys for Live was a third one. I, I am trying to remember what the subtitle is for the fourth one coming out soon. Ride or Die. Yeah, Ride or Die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what it was. But yeah, it seems like Will Smith does have a chance like with making a comeback. I mean, heck, mm -hmm. I, I mean, even look at Robert Downey Jr. Robert, I mean, Robert made one heck of a comeback. Like after all the drugs that he did. He pretty much like was blacklisted, even though that he was a name still, but he was blacklisted. And then, um, and then John Favreau and and all the people who made Iron Man decided to take a chance on Robert Downey Jr. and 
From what I heard, Tom Tom Cruise actually was the original choice to play Iron Man in the movie. While yes, Tom Cruise is a very, very big name. He would have been more expensive and because of they went with Robert Downey Jr., he was cheaper. And a lot of people agree, including myself, Robert Downey Jr. definitely was the better choice. And I think right. Cruise would have done it, but scheduling conflicts with Mission 4 was um, a big thing. Yeah, probably, yeah. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, um, so Travis, uh, what are your thoughts, like, on... I mean, minus what you just said, what are your thoughts on the possibility of, uh, uh, well, it's not a possibility anymore, but what are your thoughts on like how Tom Cruise almost played Iron Man? Uh, do you think that he would have pulled it off or do you agree that Robert Downey Jr. was the better choice? I think Robert Downey Jr. was a good, was a good, um, was a good pick, though I think Cruise could have worked. He would have been a little more expensive, but I think Cruise could have worked. But I do think, in hindsight, I think um, Downey Jr. just ended up working. And realistically, going forward, how expensive Robert Downey Jr. became to be. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. At first, he wasn't as expensive, but then he became more expensive. Oh, as yeah. A, uh, playing Iron Man made him more expensive to use as an actor. Yep, and um, especially considering that throughout the movies he was asking for a bigger and bigger paycheck, rightfully so, um, is because that Iron Man like was the movie on um, that start of the whole MCU, and I be I could be wrong. I believe that he was the one who got paid the most in Avengers: Infinity War and in Avengers: Endgame. Like, do you mm -hmm. know how expensive it is to use? Adam Sandler in one in a movie. Yeah, Adam Sandler's crazy. It's, oh man. It's on average like thirty to forty million dollars to use him in a movie. Mm. Wow. So, yeah. Dang. I'm so happy that they're making a happy Gilmore too. Yeah. Ooh, me too. So I saw that. that. I'm gonna be curious where they're gonna take with like the I'm curious where they're gonna take like the overall I story. I know. I'm I'm because he's returning to play Happy Gilmore, and then they're also getting um that guy to play uh um Shooter McGavin. Yeah, yes. Christopher McDonald. Mm -hmm. And I heard rumors <clears throat> that they're getting Tiger Woods to play Chubbs Peterson uh, Jr. Oh, Just, I did not hear that. Yeah. So. Oh. Um, wow. Okay. Tiger Woods. Interesting. I, and another another thing, Eric, what are some sitcoms that you grew up with that you oh, remember watching? I definitely do re remember watching Saved by the Bell back when I was a kid. Friends, I remember watching Friends. Uh, My favorite show of all time is Friends. So. Uh-huh, yeah. And I mean, heck, you actually got autographs from the entire cast. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is amazing, man. Yeah, I have the pilot script signed by the entire cast. So. And you got that off of a website, right? Yeah. That is as amazing. A gift, as a gift, yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. But yeah, there's been other sitcoms I've enjoyed too. I'm just trying to remember what they were. Uh, yeah, Saved by the Bell. I, I definitely do remember watching that. <laughs> I do agree Saved by the Bell is pretty dated nowadays, but I guess that's just a part of its charm. You could kind of call this a sitcom, but I love Drake and Josh. Yeah? Mm. Did you call Josh, that a sitcom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I love Drake and Josh. Travis and I used to watch Drake and Josh all the time growing up. And <laughs> we, we, we love Drake. Drake, where's the door hole? It's right there. I'm going to. So we'll okay, I will. He runs into the treehouse door. Oh, I see what's coming. Oh, do ya? <laughs> he forgot the saw before he put up the. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny episode that that's brought up. I know. In my There's opinion, so many actual memes that have come from that show. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's been a lot of memes about that. In my opinion, the funniest episode was when. One of them was at like some contest or whatever, and then like he was saying about 
and then he mentioned like in a year that's way 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 out there and then like the person holding the contest said that's the wrong answer because that year hasn't happened yet yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh! I will one never. Of, one of my favorite episodes is when um, Josh runs over Oprah. Oh man! Josh runs over Oprah, and he's like, "I just hit Oprah." <laughs> it's like, gosh. oh my god! Did you just kill Oprah? Wow! I definitely don't remember that. It's, it's one not. of the. It's one of the later episodes, but. It's pretty funny. In a parallel universe, Tom Cruise is Tony Stark. Yeah, from what I heard about a rumor, I heard a rumor that Tom Cruise was supposed to make a cameo and in, in, in the multiverse of madness, like as Iron Man. It makes sense since that he almost was Iron Man. But I mean ultimately well, that didn't happen. With um in so in um in one of the Avengers movies coming up. Tom Cruise was supposed to make an appearance as Tony Stark because of the multiverse thing that's yep. going on. And that was supposed to happen in the Kang dynasty or whatever. But because they're going to rename it because of the thing that happened with... Because of Jonathan who, Majors being fired. Because of yeah. Jonathan Majors being fired and they're renaming the movie now and they're recasting the role... They don't know what they're going to do, if they're going to still do the whole multiverse or what, if they're going to keep that or if they're just recasting the role and renaming the movie. Hmm. I guess it's kind of hard to say, but yeah, why did Jonathan Majors get fired again? It's basically for because um, of accusations that he was a wife beater. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And apparently there are some witnesses to the whole thing of domestic violence so technically so, there's a little leg to stand on and so way. technically disney can't take any chances so they had to fire him so mm, well mm. that's a shame. Mm, apparently there were accusations by like three different women so yeah people take that stuff pretty seriously but i mean there were also accusations against kevin spacey and those got dismissed in court so he's a free man now so Damn. yeah from what i saw kevin spacey's actually doing cons now yeah and apparently kevin spacey's turned out to be complete lies in court like three of the men that accused him or whatever their stories didn't like didn't yeah no up. they openly admitted that they lied like they, they lied for money so Shit. that's horrible yeah but what so, about the whole so because of those so three awesome. men? Because of those three men, they threw the entire case out. So, oh man, that's terrible. Yeah, but so wait, so so wait, so because of that, Kevin Spacey actually was innocent the entire time. Yeah, he according they, they them, ac yes. according to the court, they found him innocent of everything. Uh, hey, uh, I am getting an important phone call. I will be back. All right. All right. Leave anyway. Uh, no worry. What time do you get off? Uh, ten thirty, I think. Ten thirty. Okay. Okay. So okay. Well, have a great day, Travis. All right. Yep. Ten thirty. Ten thirty. Have a good day, Travis. See you next time. He said okay. Oh, Travis. Yeah. Would you move this real quick? Oh yes. You know, I keep kind of, I keep kind of mixing this up. Who's the eldest and who's the youngest? Travis is the oldest. Yeah. Oh, shocking. Yeah. Oh, he is the oldest. He is four years older. So. Ah, uh, fair enough. Fair enough. What year was he born in, by the way? Ninety-one. And you, ninety-five. Ninety-five. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yep. 95 is the same year as my younger sister. Okay. okay. Yeah, I was born October 21st, so. Yeah. Sent you a birthday shout out like uh, six months ago. Yep. Anyway, um, speaking of Kevin Spacey, what about Bill Cosby? Because it's a little bit sticky when we're dealing with uh, what he 
he allegedly did to those women? Yeah, he so he he original one he got um acquitted on one of the charges, but um he got found guilty on one of the cases, so he's like got ten years. Hmm. So but. Yeah, because it seems like because um a lot of my professors in university they seem to have something against Bill Cosby because of what yeah. he did. Yeah. They have a I should know because um um speaking as a, an aspiring academic, mm -hmm. I did a presentation exam on the Cosby show's use of space. Yeah. in their brownstone neighborhood. And um, I wanted to use that as a um, symposium topic for New York, but yes. I ended up being dropped. So I had a chat with my one of my professors about it, and I ended up doing it here in Berlin. So okay. I managed to have a great grade about it. She said that, the only piece of feedback that I had was just, although it was well-researched, although it was really fantastic that you talked about, like, the show in detail. Um, am I Filipino? I was born in the United States, and I was raised in the Philippines. So you could say that I am an American of Filipino-Spanish heritage. Do you know how to speak any other languages? German. I can speak German. Oh, okay. um, Tagalog is extremely limited. Um, Spanish. I'm quite flu. I'm a lot more fluent in Spanish. Oh, okay. Um, another. And the other thing. The other thing is because um, going back to um, the Cosby Show, that's also something I've noticed about the show because. While it did have like um, this upper class, upper middle class Black American family, which is a very, a very, very positive representation, what it was trying to do was that it was um, trying to debunk a lot of the claims from the Moynihan report, which was this um, report that kind of showed that Black American people in the 1960s. We're living in poverty, single parent households, and um, not so great conditions. So the Cosby Show was a show that tried to, you know, debunk all those claims by Daniel Patrick Moynihan. Okay. And um, um, although uh, Bill Cosby's character Cliff Huxtable is the patriarch, Claire is as much of a strong matriarch, let alone head of the family as Cliff is, and is the stronger disciplinarian. Yeah. So there are definitely some, you know, gender dynamics going on in the household as well as, you know, the space, especially in the living room, because what the living room in the Cosby show specifically the Huxtable living room is basically an, a locale that the family gathers together, whether it be for special occasions or for when something goes wrong. And um, especially when the family is together. Yeah. Um, so that's one. So that is one thing that I've recognized. And another thing is um, Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids. You know that show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would argue that it is just as much of, like, must-watch television. And it's the type of television that even children today need because that particular show had valuable life lessons. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I wish it could still air on the television these days because kids really need that. Our gener This generation of kids let alone our generation of kids really need that type of really yeah. good entertainment rather than the shit that we've been see seeing on a Coco Melon or any of the other stuff that passes as children entertainment. Yeah. 
Yeah. If you ask me. Definitely. Yeah, but I think because of what happened with Bill Cosby and um, all the allegations, I highly doubt that shows like Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids, let alone the Cosby Show, will ever see the light of day on television again. Yeah. All right. So sorry that I had to miss all that. So what all did I miss? We were talking about Bill Cosby and the other almost that he had show and um fat albert and the cosby kids now from my understanding uh bill cosby got arrested and from what i heard wasn't it actually proven like in, in court that he actually did all the things that he was accused of well so he i know he was found not guilty on one of them but he was found guilty on like one or two of them and he got like 10 years so well and he's already like what, like eighty years old, so in, yeah, in his eighties, yeah. yeah so. But well, you know, a lot of times I feel like that we don't think about the consequences, like to the yeah. things that we say or do. You could always talk about um, could always talk about um, like glow ups, like people like. Robert Downey Jr., who was arrested and spent like two or three years in prison for and look like, at Lindsay like, Lohan these days. Yeah, for yep. like Robert Downey Jr. spent like two or three years in prison for I think it was like drug trafficking. Yeah, I and believe. So, yeah. Now look at him. I mean, he's one of the top listed actors in Hollywood. So yeah, and, and I mean, just recently, like he won an Oscar for Oppenheimer. I know that's mm. crazy. Yeah, so that's one heck of a comeback. Oh, yeah. that, to me, to me, that was a legacy award because that he'd been nominated quite a few times, and that was his first Oscar win. So, oh, definitely, yeah, and you know, and I certainly hope that Lohan like can make that comeback too because yeah, she was out of the spotlight for the longest time is because of all the drug problems she was dealing with, and uh, from what I heard, I heard that they announced a Freaky Friday 2 and Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, they were talking about mm -hmm. that in an interview together. But yeah, yeah, I'm just curious. So I'm not sure what they can do with the plot this time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want to have it be too much of a repeat of the mm -hmm. original movie, but uh, mm -hmm. maybe they reverse roles with their kids, I guess. Yeah, that'd be fun. I kind of sometimes also hope the best for Amanda Bynes. Yeah, oh, me yeah, too. definitely. That was so sad for her, really. How messed I up heard she that she was. went through hell, and I heard that she was treated like. I hope the best for her, how messed up she got by Nickelodeon and all that. But hey, I will be right back. All right. All right. But, like, I grew up. Like watching the Amanda show and all, I watched Big Fat Liar and so did I, um, man. Um, I watched all that and stuff like that. There was, I I loved the Amanda show so much. I watched it like every day it came on and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it was Same such a here. good show and stuff. But you never know like what's going on behind the scenes and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Even more tragic was like what happened to Angelique Bates behind the scenes of um, all that. Yeah. Um, she was abused. I think she was abused by, you know, her mother, her uh, mother behind the scenes of all that. Um, it's hard not to feel bad for what happened to her. And well, yeah. It's like, oh, uh, it's like I never realized that that happened to her until yeah, that's she came out with it back in the 2010, early 2020s, whatever. Yeah. The other thing I've been thinking about is um, that documentary, Quiet on Set. I think it really goes without saying that it's not just Dan Schneider who was a total scumbag, but you know, Brian Peck, 
Jason Handy and all the other shit has not only Nickelodeon and Disney, but also all of Hollywood who dare to uh, do unspeakable yeah. things to children. Disgusting. But then again, this shit isn't anything new. This oh, has yeah. happened many, 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 many years ago. Oh, yeah. What happened to, um, who was that? Bobby Driscoll. Uh -huh. If you knew him as the voice of Peter Pan. Yeah. Yeah, you got that right, Mr. D-Man 21. Ugh. Those bastards. Those bastards should have been sacked out of Nickelodeon years ago. And poor Drake Bell. I know that there are, there are things I don't always agree with Drake Bell when it comes to certain stuff. But the fact that he came out of came out with his story of being abused by Brian Peck. Oh boy. Very, very depressing when you think about it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh boy. I mean, and you also wonder, and I get it, you know, the, the Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide cast, nothing really happened to them behind the scenes other than, like, you know, they were just wild, horny teenagers when the cameras <laughs> were not rolling. Yeah. Which is understandable. Yeah. At least. Because if it were a Dan Schneider production, you'll expect some really yeah. off-color and... Just innuendo laden jokes. Yep. And I use the term loosely that have kids in them. Kids were barely old enough to even vote. And they get thrown in these type of situations. Mm -hmm. And let's also not forget about the girl characters who end up being kissed by guys who are actually either old enough to be their older brother, their college aged older older brothers yep. or or fathers. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Like this is the reason why I never cared for Zoe 101. I never cared for iCarly. You know Drake and Josh is a little bit conflicting for me these days. But the Amanda show you know, at least it had its, you know, charms. Oh, my God. And um, the snick on air dare. Do not even remind me about that. Yeah. Do not. You know, it's just as bad, if not worse, than Nick Studio 10. Yep. And ever since then, I have lost my respect for Nickelodeon. Yeah, Nickelodeon. Like, I gotta, I gotta finish watching that documentary or that docu series. You no, know, Alexa Nicholas also came out. Has been also coming out with her stories of being a survival against Nickelodeon's whole mis maltreatment <laughs> against her. Especially what happened to her behind the scenes of Zoe 101. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you got that right. But I would say that both Nickelodeon and Disney Channel are just as bad as each other. But I would even say that Nickelodeon is probably marginally worse than Disney Channel. I say this because Nickelodeon, while it makes no secret that it's always been the rowdier, more irreverent of the big three of the, the family networks that we grew up with. I don't like to call Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and Disney Channel kids networks, although kids are the main demographic. 
Yeah. I would like to call it family networks because there are actually shows that, you know, children and teenagers and certain young adults can enjoy. Yeah. Into- But yeah, those two networks really had a lot of shit people working on there. Oh, yeah. Even Brian Peck, after he got apprehended, ended up voicing a mirror on Disney Channel's Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. That's already another reason why I didn't even want to stick with Disney Channel anymore. Yeah, I don't know how he could get a job after. You know. You know, yeah, even if you even saw my you know rant against Disney Channel, you realize that by the time I was twelve back in two thousand and four, already started to see the signs of why Disney Channel has had a, or has left a very sour taste in my mouth. Yeah, I did not like how that dang network. Mm-hmm. And I know that Travis also had a counter argument, which I greatly appreciate. I do understand that Sweet Life was quite fun in its own special way. I mean, it made a star out of, you know, Cole and Dylan Sprouse. Heck, it also made a star out of um, Ashley Tisdale and Brenda Song. In Tisdale's case, she went from doing a lot of the supporting roles in. 90s early 2000s ch- television yep. to being kind of a star in her own right mm-hmm. same thing with brenda song she went from being mostly a supporting act and by the time she was on disney she had her first break as um tia from phil of the future and eventually as natasha from stuck in the suburbs to really finding her footing as london tipton oh yeah definitely granted um, when it comes to a lot of the Disney Channel heroines, I do find London Tipton's stupidity grating. Sometimes I almost just want to, you know, make like Jeffrey from Fresh Prince of Bel Air and just, you know, give her a lot of disses. Same thing I can say about Maddie. Same thing I could say about Raven Baxter and Chelsea Daniels. Yeah. I did not really have a lot of good memories with those quote-unquote heroines, especially from what a lot of my girl classmates in middle school turned into. Or middle school school turned into. Yeah. Not a lot of good memories. But it was what it was. We were going through some very different paths in our lives. And, you know, at times I do feel empathy for them. But at the same time, well, I already knew the crap that was going on in Disney Channel. And I, well, Mr. D-Man 21, it's not just what happened with Demi Lovato, but also with Miley Cyrus Heck, Vanessa Ann Hudgens' privacy was not even respected. So what all did I miss out on? All the shit that was going on in Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. Uh, yeah, from what I heard that they recently released like a documentary revealing yes. all that went on. And from what I heard, a lot that went on was pretty messed up. Mm. Yeah, Travis and I... Dylan and I were talking about the shit that was going on in Nickelodeon. All the shit that was going on in there, man. Yeah, I heard uh, there was some pretty messed up stuff. Mm-hmm. Especially toward young actors and young actresses. Yeah, and I believe that that's what happened to Amanda Bynes, and that's probably why that she eventually left doing acting. Yeah, and why she had a lot of run-ins. Oh, hey, Ghost Rider's here. Hey, Ghost Rider. Yeah. How's it going? Hey. Yeah. Welcome, Ghost Rider. And yeah, 15 years on, on YouTube. That's crazy. In five more years, it'll be 20 years. Yes, oh, indeed. God, I feel old. <laughs> Midlife crisis over here. But yeah, uh, 
Yeah, man. And to think that you're one of the originals like that have the light like that stuck by. And I greatly appreciate that, man. But yeah, 15 years on YouTube. Doesn't feel like it's been that long. Like, holy crap. And yeah, I mean, I've come a long ways with my channel. And uh, and yeah, Dylan, uh, didn't you and Travis start uh, 406 Boys like last year? It was either that or 2022. It was somewhere around there. 2022, yeah. Mm. Okay, so it was around the time when Rise, it was around the time when Rise of the JWs yeah. came out then. <clears throat> yeah, I'm so sorry, everybody, for the delays with getting that DVD made. A lot of issues, and so I'm thinking that at this point, if I can't get it out on DVD, I might as well should just put the behind-the-scenes documentary on YouTube, like, for people to see, so... Yeah, I'm so sorry about the delays with all that, but. Hmm. Oh. I never heard anything about that, so I'm. I think because, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I get, I, I mean, no worries, Travis. I totally understand where you're coming from. I guess you could say that, you know. I also respected the Disney Channel stars back in the day as people. I just didn't really care too much about their characters because, well, with Raven Baxter, I did find her, you know, annoying and obnoxious. London Tipton's brand of stupidity was grating. Um, although I still love you know, Brenda song and she's doing amazingly with Macaulay Culkin. If I dare say so myself. Maddie Fitzpatrick, there are times I found her rather pretentious. To the point where I just want to put a cork in her mouth. Um Keely Tesla, uh, she's okay, but you know. And Pim Diffie, eh, eh. And Chelsea Daniels, do not ever remind me about her. She's kind of a dim with herself. But Annalisa Vanderpol, very talented. I hope and, you still uh, I also I also I also admittedly enjoy <laughs> Ali and AJ, I, I aka uh, Alison Michalka and uh, Amanda Michalka. Yeah, Ghost Rider. I don't see any reason why I would not be around for my 20th anniversary. But yeah, uh, definitely by then, I imagine I'll be more advanced with my channel and all that. I mean, heck, even just within the amount of time I've been on YouTube, I've come a long ways. I mean, like with the quality of my videos, the editing has definitely gotten better over time. The acting's got gotten better over time. I mean, heck, it's because of YouTube is why I met Dylan and Travis and Tony and a lot of, but yeah, a lot of the people who I, you know, like a lot of the people who I ended up becoming friends with, I met off mm -hmm. of YouTube and, yeah. and it's just That's crazy to, to imagine, like, never once did I ever think that I would make friends off of YouTube, but hey, yeah, I mean, exactly. it's a little surprises, isn't it? Yeah. Now I'm going to give you quite the question that you've been waiting for okay your top seven favorite power ranger seasons favorite. oh man that's hard to say because when i was a kid there were a lot of seasons that i i have a lot of nostalgia for a lot of them oh man that's hard uh I definitely grew up with Mighty Morphin, as a, a lot of people did. I also grew up with Zio. I grew up with Wild Force. Yeah, I grew up with Wild Force. Grew up with Time Force. Uh, man, it's hard for me to pick a number one. I mean, a lot of them have like their pros and cons. 
hard for me to say. Oh, yeah, and Power Rangers in space. I mean, like, if somebody were to say Power Rangers in space is the best season, I'll go, yep, I totally get why, because um, it's one of the most critically acclaimed. And it definitely, like, if that would have been the ending to Power Rangers, I would have been satisfied, because the way how they ended it was extremely satisfying and and yeah the theme song's great the characters are great the villain's great the theme song's great as nostalgic as i am for the other seasons as far as story goes now look i do have a lot of nostalgia for mighty morphin and the theme song is great but a lot of the seasons in Mighty Morphin were kind of cringe, like with like the rapping pumpkin. That was cringe. Like, yes, it is very memorable, mm-hmm. but the rapping pumpkin definitely was cringe. And yes, and like the whole arc with the Green Ranger is very iconic in Mighty Morphin. So I'm going to say story wise, I think I'm going to go with man time force it also has a also has a really good story as well and that has great characters and villains and theme song oh man crap that was such a good question uh i think in space now look uh i Know that Antony loves Time Force, and I do as well. It's a great season, but I think In Space had definitely had the much more satisfying ending. Not to say that Time Force didn't have a satisfying ending, but I think I'm going to go with In Space. Mm. Yeah, and that that was really hard for me to think about that. Uh, so yeah, so I think I'll go with those being my favorite. Yeah, 2029. I mean, that will be here before we know it. I mean, the older we get, the faster time goes. And I feel like that yeah. we underestimate underestimate that. And yeah, and that's why I've been working hard at bettering my own life. Because I realize, hey, one of the harshest lessons about life is that we are not going to be around forever i mean eventually all of our loved ones are gonna die eventually we are all gonna die but what i say now people often ponder about what's the meaning to life and i by no means claiming that i have it all figured out because we are all in this journey called life but what i think is one of the meanings to life the way how i interpret it legacy because you Mm. know after when we die the only thing that we have left is our is like is the legacy that we leave behind and Mm -hmm. what and you know and the legacy we leave behind after we die definitely is defined a lot by the things that we do while when we are alive yeah so you know life is just too damn short like Mm -hmm. if there are things you want to go do do it because you're not going to have your chance for all eternity. And and after we die, the earth is going to continue spinning. Society is going to continue to function. But like what I say, like what I said about the legacy that we leave behind, what kind of legacy are we going to impact like on? Yeah. What kind of legacy are we going to leave, leave an impact on society after we pass away? yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely but yeah and i mean heck i mean just almost a year ago now like i had my grandpa pass away and and we can save our loved ones like from as many things as we want but the one thing that we can never save anyone from time exactly that's the one thing we can never save them from and you know a harsh lesson that I've learned is that appreciate all the people in your life, you know, tell every single one of them like that. You love them, tell them all that you appreciate them 
Because one day you're not going to have that chance. I mean, heck, I mean, Mecha G Zero. I mean, he passed away, and I'm shocked about that. And how young was he, by the way? I don't know exactly. I know he was in like his early 30s. Oh man. So I mean, to imagine that he left behind his kid, his really, really young kid. I mean, his kid isn't even 10 years old yet. Shit. So he left behind that kid, left behind his wife. Now, look, I, I I do understand that because of the circumstances, it was not Mecca's fault. I understand that it was a car wreck, and, and that was not his fault. But that still sucks. Hmm. But, yeah, um, London was my number one childhood crush. My childhood crush definitely was Lindsay Lohan, and it's ironic, you know, like that the fact that we mentioned her. But yeah, so Dylan and Antonia, who were some of your celebrity crushes back when you two were like either kids or teenagers? Who oh boy. Now excuse me. And if we're gonna go listen, <clears throat> try, listen, Dylan, you got this more than I do. I need. I still need to think about it. So, Dylan, please go first. Let's see here. Oh, man, childhood crush. Childhood crush. Oh, so in middle school. So fresh. I, I'm just gonna count freshman year as childhood. Okay, that is fine. So. Freshman year, I was absolutely obsessed to the point where I had pictures plastered all over my bedroom door, like probably half dressed pictures all over my bedroom door of Megan Fox. <laughs> well, I mean, all I mean, two over people my room. like probably like. Sexy pictures of Megan Fox all over my door. I mean, to be fair, I, I feel like that she was a lot of boys. Oh, yeah. Celebrity crush. Yep, like, I've grown out of that Megan Fox. Right now, my number one, Meg, my number one, uh, uh, I have two celebrity crushes right now. Okay. My number one is Jennifer Aniston, and it will, always will be. Yeah, and, and I mean, like, for her being in her 50s, she looks damn good. And my number two is um, Chloe Grace Moretz. Oh, yeah. She is. Oh, yeah. She's definitely pretty a attractive, too. And a lot of people could complain saying that when they did the Carrie remake, the one from 2013, people were complaining that Chloe Grace Moretz like, was too attractive for it. Hmm. Now, what I say is that now uh, people can be bullied regardless of their looks true so yeah so so yeah so but yeah so antony uh dylan said his uh who were some of yours okay so if we go back to when i was a five-year-old boy and i remember watching the george the jungle uh trailer with brendan fraser I had a crush on him. Mm -hmm. I had he was my man crush ever since I was a kid. When he lifted that uh, dumbbell in that uh, teaser slash trailer, I was totally enamored with him. And I was only five. He was such a hottie as George of the Jungle. He was a fucking hottie back then. I loved his sinewy muscles. It was just. Such a sight to behold. He was number one. Then Mike Henry, who was known for three Tarzan movies with Cy Weintraub. Um, that was for guy crushes. And then for girl crushes, I remember going crazy of over Charlotte Church and Alexa Vega before I fully came out of the closet. Well, it was Charlotte Church and Alexa Vega was in the early 2000s. Okay, well, 
That's pretty awesome. And I can imagine that yeah. because Brendan Fraser was one of yours, I can imagine that you're glad that Brendan Fraser recently made a comeback. I'm happy for him, really. I mean, I know that he was no longer the haughty that I admired him for, but I think the fact that he made such a committed effort to giving such a heart-wrenching performance as the main character of The Whale is, like, painful, you know? It was quite painful yeah. to watch or think about because... Every time I look back at Brendan Fraser, especially in his tenure as George of the Jungle, I fell in love with him. I just freaking fell in love with the guy. You know, because he was I know that he was a I know that he played a Tarzan parody, but my god, was he just totally handsome and he had a very he had a rather chiseled physique and my gosh and even his um even his um replacement in George of the Jungle too, Christopher Showerman, he was yet another childhood man crush I had. I mean, Christopher Showerman was actually a lot buffer, a little more muscular than um Brendan Fraser. So that was another one down. Um I remembered having a multiple or multitude upon multitude of um, man crushes, especially of the muscular type. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. But yeah, like I said, mine when I was a child was Lindsay Lohan. As a teenager, uh, Ghost Rider mentioned Selena Gomez, but yeah, she was one of mine when I was a teenager. I'm sure I had a, another one when I was a teenager, but in adulthood, I made it very clear that uh, Elizabeth Olsen, like, is my new celebrity crush. But yeah, uh, but yeah, anything uh, Elizabeth Olsen's in, I definitely will go watch it. But yeah, um, yeah, and Speaking of that guy, like who, like who played George of the Jungle in George of the Jungle Two, uh, what did he do afterwards? Like hmm. Christopher Showerman? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what he did afterwards. You know, all I remembered Christopher. Um, I'm pretty sure he did some other stuff. Starship Troopers, that was back in 1997. Uh, let me see right here. Yeah, um, he did a short film. He um, basically did a lot more indie stuff and a, and a, a lot more TV series. He was okay. even King Triton from the, I think he was even King Triton from uh, the theater, Broadway musical theater version of Little Mermaid, which is rather interesting. I never thought of him as someone who would play King Triton. Hang on. But hey, life's full of surprises. Yeah, I've, I've always known Christopher Showerman as being such a major, major hunk, and... Like I said, he was way hunkier than uh, Brendan Fraser as George of the Jungle. I mean, you just got to look at those sinews, man. Look at them for yourself. And even in his, um, I think, the time that he posed as Tarzan, um, uh, Christopher Showerman, absolute hottie. Just absolute, absolute hunk of a man. Ugh. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, um Ghost Rider says I like some of her songs. Well that's awesome. Selena Gomez, another Disney Channel alum. But yeah, um what I really admire about Selena nowadays is that she's a very big advocate like for mental health and suicide prevention. Excuse me. Matter of fact, I believe that she was supposed to be the, the lead female role in Thirteen Reasons Why. Uh, the role eventually went to Catherine Langford. I'm not sure why Selena Gomez didn't act in it. 
but I think she still was a producer. But yeah, 13 Reasons Why, that was a show that, that show had balls. Mm. And yeah, um, did you two ever see 13 Reasons Why? Uh, yeah, I've only heard of it. And Ahmed um, and Dylan, from what you saw, what were your thoughts on it? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, yes. I definitely like it too. Uh, I I definitely do like seasons one and two better than seasons three and four. I, I, I don't know if they ever did a season five or not. But yeah, season one, uh, and especially in season two where they, they actually had the balls to actually show some stuff. With a lot of shows, they only could get away with implying it. Yeah. Actually show it. And now, look, I do get why that they showed it, because they were wanting to show people what some of these issues are. Yeah. And, yeah, and uh, 13 Reasons Why definitely brought a lot of awareness to mental health. Mm -hmm. And which, yeah, I definitely greatly applaud the show for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it, it was based off of a book. And when they did the later seasons, the later seasons did not take from the book at all. And so those were all stuff that they made up, like, for themselves as the show went on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, some of the things that they got away with shocked me. And the reason why they're able to get away with it is because Netflix isn't as uptight about censoring that kind of stuff, but eventually enough people complain about that infamous scene in the in season one. Since Antony hasn't seen it, I'm not going to spoil it. But there's an infamous scene that was uncensored on Netflix, but then enough people complained about it where now it is censored on Netflix. But if you want to watch the uncensored version, you can get it on DVD, and it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier about physical media versus like Netflix and all that. So, but yeah, uh, I am going to have to get going soon because I do have a rehearsal like for a play that I'm, that I'm in. So, okay. So yeah. Right. So, so yeah. So I could just leave the, I could just leave this going and I can have YouTube talk if that's okay. I actually have to go as well. I have an appointment, so. Okay, so Fair I enough. guess Antonia, did you want uh did you have to get going too or what? It's already um twelve thirty seven AM here in Berlin. But you know, I do have some parting words. In honor of Eric's fifteenth anniversary on YouTube, I highly recommend you all to please subscribe to his channel and also support his content. The same story can be said for Dylan and Travis of the 406 Boys. Please subscribe to their channel. Awesome. Well, I certainly greatly appreciate those yeah. kind words. Um, if it wasn't for my rehearsal, I would continue this on. But hey, you know, I want to be reliable and get there on time. But yeah, yeah thank you all so much for coming by. Uh, thank you for helping me celebrate 15 years on YouTube. Uh, Amazing how much time flies on by, and then in five more years, it'll be my 20th anniversary. So, yeah, I really greatly appreciate the support from all of you. And, yeah, and, uh, you'll all have a fantastic day. See you next time. Please subscribe to their channels, and take care.